Time now for a segment brought to you by Brown Medicine. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And here to talk risks, signs, and tips for prevention is Dr. Stephanie L. Graff from the Division of Hematology and Oncology at Brown Medicine. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning. Thank you so much for, for being here. Uh, you, we were just talking a little while ago, and you were saying one in eight women in the U.S. will develop invasive breast cancer over the course of uh, their lifetime. Um, does age have anything to do with it? And as someone gets older, does the risk become more? Yeah, age is actually the number one risk factor. Patients are always surprised when they're diagnosed. And I say, you know, you keep having birthdays, which is the number one risk factor for developing breast cancer. And we're most likely to be diagnosed with breast cancer in our seventh decade, wow. which really surprises patients. Yeah, is, is there an age where you're seeing it um, start earlier? It, you know, I think that that is a little bit of that confirmation bias where as women in their 40s or even in their late 30s are sharing those stories in the news or on Facebook more often, mm -hmm. we see it and so those stories hit us harder and so we feel like we're seeing it more, but that's maybe not actually true. Now, obviously we hear about women with breast cancer all the time, but there are men who develop this as well. Absolutely. So men develop breast cancer as well. About one in 300, one in 320 men will develop breast cancer in their lifetime also associated with aging or genetic abnormalities. Now what about people who obviously who they have this in their family um, are they more at risk or is it kind of you know not not to say luck of the draw but luck of the draw. Yeah so definitely family history is a risk factor but most people who develop breast cancer do not have a family history so just because there's no family history of breast cancer doesn't mean that you don't have to do mammograms right. or you're free and clear from worrying about the disease but for those of us that have breast cancer in our family history you maybe should be talking to your primary care doctor or your gyn or a high-risk specialist about whether or not genetic testing is appropriate yeah. what are the most common symptoms for for women to, to look for so hopefully it's it's just detected on a screening mammogram and you have no symptoms. Right. That's my dream scenario because that's the earliest stage breast cancer, the easiest to cure. But symptoms that we would expect are a palpable change in your breast, so a lump that feels maybe like a seed or an almond inside your mm -hmm. breast that you can feel, palpable lumps in your armpit, like enlarged lymph nodes, mm -hmm. which can be confusing now that lymph nodes can get swollen from the COVID right. vaccine. Um, changes in your nipple, discharge from your nipple are all things that I would want you to be talking to a doctor about. Now, a lot of a lot of women, a lot of people have been putting off their medical treatment during COVID. Yeah. Um, have you seen many women coming back again and getting the tests that they need? Unfortunately, we're seeing upstaging. We're seeing a oh. higher rate of later stage diagnosis because oh. we did have such a slowdown in the rate of screening mammograms during the height of the pandemic. Um, and we're estimating that we may see as much of a 20% increased risk oh. of death because of the slowdown. So I really hope that patients now that we have a really high rate of vaccinations here in Rhode Island will go out and get their screening mammograms as we're talking more and more during Breast Cancer Awareness Month about getting back out there. Because yeah, as you said, if found early, there are, there are ways to, to help. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Doctor, thanks so much for, for being You're here welcome. with us. All great information. This segment was brought to you by Brown Medicine. All important reminders and info as we mark Breast Cancer Awareness Month.